is Christine um, and I'm going to be talking through this Introduction to the Depression workshop. So what is depression? Um, so we can all have times when we feel sad or a bit low. When we feel like this we often use the word depressed to describe how we are feeling. However, everyday blues is not depression. People with the blues may have a short depressed mood that they can manage and soon recover without depression. The type of depression we are talking about in this workshop is referred to as clinical depression. So a low mood or persistent sadness which can be characterised with a range of behavioural, physical, cognitive and emotional symptoms. A clinical depression is an illness characterised by an unusually sad or low mood, which affects the person's behaviour and has physical, emotional and cognitive effects. Depression is common, but serious illness which can be recurrent. So people can recover, but may develop another episode of depression later on. A clinical depression lasts for at least two weeks. So symptoms must be reported as being for two weeks or longer to be diagnosed as clinical depression. However, it is important to understand that most episodes of depression will last for several months. This affects a person's ability to study, concentrate at work and enjoy relationships. Symptoms of depression can vary from person to person. A person experiencing clinical depression may experience intense emotions of anxiety, hopelessness, negativity and helplessness, and the feelings stay with them instead of going away. It affects a person's ability to enjoy and be interested in activities when they once have done so. It's been likened to a feeling of bleakness. It can have a huge impact on concentration and making decisions and the ability to work and can have a real negative impact on personal relationships. It can affect someone's confidence and often people will report themselves as feeling guilty for no particular reason. Some people will experience sleep problems, either sleeping too much or not being able to sleep. It can affect appetites, again eating too much or not eating enough and losing weight. When severe increases risk of harm, substance misuse and suicide. Depression is one of the leading contributors of suicide and coronary heart disease. With suicide being the most common cause of death for men aged 20 to 49. Depression is one of the leading causes of disability in the United Kingdom. 676 million people are affected by mental health issues worldwide. So that is 8 to 12% of the population. One in four adults have been diagnosed with a mental health condition. More adults than this are likely to have a mental health condition that goes undiagnosed. The most common reported mental health issue is depression, which accounts for 90% of mental health conditions diagnosed. There is a much higher prevalence of depression diagnosed in women, um, and women um, and that's because women are more likely to talk about it, men less likely to report feeling depression. Remember that suicide is the most common cause of death in men aged 20 to 49. So depression is experienced within many other mental health conditions. So depression forms part of other mental health issues. So for example, those diagnosed with bipolar, depression is experienced on some occasions, whilst mania, which be experienced, which may be considered the opposite of depression at other times. Another example is substance misuse disorder, where those affected are likely to experience depression. So some warning signs um, to look for. Um, so some of the behavioural signs so could be drinking too much, um, this could be withdrawing um, from um, loved ones, from friends, um, loss of motivation, so this may well be not wanting to uh, go to work or see, meet with friends and people, 
um, eaten too much uh, or not enough. So this could be comfort eating, um, or you know this could be really not wanting food at all, so therefore losing weight. Um, and you could be quite irritable, so therefore that would cause you to argue and pick fights maybe, and be quite volatile. And there is also the possibility you could self-harm. Um, physical, I mean, it could be your appearance, you appear quite unkempt. It can affect your speech, so therefore you could speak in a slow, monotonous way. Um, you could be, look sad, so looking sad, depressed, quite nervous, a bit agitated. Suffer sort of chronic fatigue, so this is something that you may don't feel you can do things, you're not going about your daily tasks, um, you may notice this at work, um, so therefore you could be sort of um, failing there or at school, at college, um, and, a, and a loss of sexual desire. So depression can affect many areas of life in the way we think, feel and behave. Um, people with depression don't necessarily uh, show all these symptoms. Um, so the more symptoms, the more severe the depression normally. Um, people who seek help with depression will normally present with physical symptoms. So someone could complain of feeling chronically tired all the time, for example. Um, the Diagnostic and Management Guidelines for Depression for Mental Disorders in Primary Care state that a person who is clinically depressed will have at least two of these following symptoms and it's an unusually sad mood that does not go away. And a loss of enjoyment and interest in activities that were once enjoyable, a lack of energy and tiredness. So that's just some of our emotions there, so we may feel incredibly sad um, or angry, like we said. Um, can show lack of emotion, a helplessness, or hopelessness. I'm thinking um, that would give us negative thoughts, we would self-criticise, look upon life in a pessimistic way, um, find it difficult to concentrate and suffer from poor memory. These are all our side effects. Okay, so, so moving on to risk factors for depression. So this could well be there's a family history of depression. So genetic predisposition and nurturing must be considered. There is evidence that a person may be predisposed to depression. That's not to say they will definitely go on to suffer. There are normally a combination of other factors that combine. Key messages about the world, expectations we have in life, and how we perceive things. Our gender. So females are a higher rate of diagnosed depression, but remember that women more, are more likely to talk about it, but men can present in different ways. It may be that they drink too much, or there could be some alcohol abuse, or there could be more violent outbursts. So our socioeconomic factors, so this could be um, a poor education, poverty, or social disadvantages. Lack of close relationships or friendships. Um, so you could feel isolated and lonely and not feel as though you have anyone to talk to or confide in. Having a baby. Um, also, this is for new fathers as concerned about responsibilities and ability to cope. Um, so this is obviously something for a mother and father that could have an impact. Uh, divorce or relationship breakdown. So divorce may be worse for the person who has been left. However, even if amicable, the life change can still lead to vulnerability, which can bring on those depression symptoms. For some medical conditions, so for example, brain injuries, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, cancer, heart attack, uh, or migraine. So all of these medical conditions um, could sort of lead to depression. 
recent adverse events, so the death of someone close, an accident, uh, serious illness, obviously worrying about things that are going on, um, and you know, on the news at the moment as well. Your temperament plays a part. So obviously, people with more sensitive natures are less likely to manage difficult life events. So if we are sort of a warrior, that can uh, that can that doesn't help. Um, childhood experiences, so difficult childhood, traumatic childhood experiences, uh, that could be abuse, uh, neglect, that could be being bullied, um, can all play a part. Menopause, because this can, uh, changes to hormone levels um, can make us feel a little bit more anxious or depressed. So, Treatment for depression, first of all to call really, speak to your GP. So explain how you're feeling, physically as well as mentally. Try to be as open as you possibly can. If you think this is going to be difficult, maybe write down how you are feeling before you have your appointment, as you may find that you are either too emotional when you get to the appointment or you may miss something out. If you feel it will help, take someone with you that you feel comfortable with that you have already spoken to. If you experience suicidal thoughts, tell your doctor. There is no need to feel ashamed. The more information you can give your doctor, the better. The opportunity for you to get the help you need to treat your depression. Remember that depression is treatable. Um, your GP will look for possible physical causes of depression, explain depression and how you can be helped and then refer you to specialist mental health services including psychological therapies and psychiatrists if necessary and signpost you to a range of self-help material uh, or they may prescribe antidepressants. So moving on to counsellors and clinical psychologists, they specialise in psychological treatment of mental illness. They are not medically trained, so will not be able to prescribe antidepressants or other drugs. They vary a lot in their level of training, approach to treatment and in their experience of helping people with depression. They can provide opportunities to talk about your problems and listen to in an emotional, supportive and non-judgmental way and provide specific methods for overcoming depression and preventing its reoccurrence. If you want a counsellor, then you can either approach your doctor who can refer you to therapy services which are provided by the NHS or if preferred refer you to a private counsellor. It is always best to get a recommendation for a private counsellor from your GP or through a trusted source. Always ensure that they are registered with an accreditation organisation such as British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy or BACP for short. So cognitive behavioural therapy. CBT is the type of psychological therapy invariably offered through the NHS. This is because it tends to be of short duration and is evidence focused. CBT is based on the idea that how we think affects the way we feel, but also how we behave. When people get depressed, they think negatively about most things and develop unhelpful thinking patterns, which can lead them to, to feeling depressed. A cognitive behavioural counsellor will teach the person to recognise their unhelpful or irrational thoughts and help them to change them to more rational and positive ones. Other techniques may be to encourage the person to change their behaviour by getting the person to do more of the things that can give them pleasure. CBT is not suitable for severely depressed people because they are too depressed to learn new thinking skills. However, can be very helpful once someone has begun to recover with medical treatment. So antidepressants. Impulses are carried between different neurons by certain types of chemical messengers known as neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters flow from one neuron to the other at junctions called synapses, where the neurons meet to transmit these impulses. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter involved in the regulation of mood. It is thought that too little serotonin can 
and cause low mood and low energy. When a transmitter flows between neurons, it does so for a minuscule amount of time and then returns to the synapse it came from. That's the expression reuptake. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors work by limiting the reuptake of the serotonin at the synapses, thus making it more available. The effect should be an improvement in mood. SSRIs take between two and five weeks to work, so once on them a person should be encouraged to keep taking them even if they don't see an improvement at first. Sometimes people feel worse before they feel better. There are different antidepressants, so sometimes it's trial and error before you find one that suits you. Work with your GP. Never come off an antidepressant without take, talking to your GP or your doctor first, as this can have a massive negative impact on your mood. Support from family and friends. Look to confide in someone who you feel you can trust. People who feel supported will recover faster. So support groups. So some people who experience depression find it helpful to meet with other people who've had similar experiences. There is evidence that peer-led groups can help with the recovery of depression. Hearing or reading about other people's experiences can validate the person's experiences, helping them make sense of them and make them feel less isolated and alone. It can also help a person learn from others' experiences of navigating the health system managing side effects or medications and the range of treatments that may be on offer. So support from community and voluntary sectors organisations. In addition to professionals uh, to support a person, they may access a voluntary or community organisation such as Mind in Bexley that can offer a range of services to help with depression. This may include support groups, courses such as anxiety management, confidence building courses, healthy food courses, also a range of groups aimed to help those who feel isolated which may cause depression. Self-help strategies. So many people experiencing depression can learn to help themselves. It is important to note that the person's ability and desire to use self-help strategies will depend on their interests. For example, exercise is known to aid depression as it can increase serotonin, which can lift mood. Another person may wish to try something creative in a way that they are able to express themselves, such as painting, writing, or playing a musical instrument. In 2008, the New Economics Foundation created a set of actions people could use to improve their own well-being. These are known as the five ways to well-being. These include connecting, being active, taking notice, keep learning and giving. We run a workshop known as the Five Steps to Ways to Wellbeing here at Mind, uh, which will focus on these approaches. Okay. So to summarise, um, what is clinical depression? So a low mood of persistent sadness, which can be characterised with a range of behavioural, physical, Cognitive and emotional symptoms lasting for a period of two weeks or more. The warning signs and effects of depression. As we have discussed, symptoms of depression are vast and vary from person to person. Often a person who visits their doctor will present with a physical symptom such as fatigue or low mood. But depression can also affect someone's thoughts, emotions and behaviour. Remember, it is different for everyone. And the risk factors, there is no single cause to depression and it often involves the interaction of many diverse biological, psychological and social factors. The treatment for depression, the key message is that depression is treatable. Again, we are all unique and so in relation to your treatment plan, one size doesn't fit all. There are lots of ways to treat depression. It's finding a combination of treatment that works for you.
going to show you um, a film clip. Hopefully this will help. I had a black dog. His name is Depression. Whenever the black dog made an appearance, I thought empty and life just seemed to slow down. He would surprise me with a visit for no reason or occasion. The black dog made me look and feel older than my years. When the rest of the world seemed to be enjoying life, I could only see it through the black dog. Activities that usually brought me pleasure suddenly ceased to. He liked to ruin my appetite. He chewed up my memory and my ability to concentrate. Doing anything or going anywhere with the black dog required superhuman strength. On social occasions, he'd sniff out what confidence I had and chase it away. My biggest fear was being found out. I worried that people would judge me. Because of the shame and stigma of the black dog, I was constantly worried that I'd be found out. So I invested vast amounts of energy into covering him up. Keeping up an emotional lie is exhausting. Black dog could make me think and say negative things. He could make me irritable difficult to be around. He would take my love and bury my intimacy. He loved nothing more than to wake me up with highly repetitive and negative thinking. He also liked to remind me how exhausted I was going to be the next day. Having a black dog in your life isn't so much about feeling a bit down, sad or blue. At its worst, it's about being devoid of feeling altogether. As I got older, the black dog got bigger and he started to hang around. I chased him off with whatever I thought might send him running. But more often than not, he'd come out on top. Going down became easier than getting up again. So I became rather good at self-medication, which never really helped. Eventually, I felt totally isolated from everything and everyone. The black dog had finally succeeded in hijacking my life. When you lose all joy in life, you can begin to question what the point of it is. Thankfully, this was the time that I sought professional help. This was my first step towards recovery and a major turning point in my life. I learned that it doesn't matter who you are, the black dog affects millions and millions of people. It is an equal opportunity mongrel. I also learned that there was no silver bullet or magic pill. Medication can help some, and others might need a different approach altogether. I also learned that being emotionally genuine and authentic to those who are close to you can be an absolute game changer. Most importantly, I learned not to be afraid of that dog and I taught him a few new tricks of my own. The more tired and stressed you are, the louder he barks, so it's important to learn how to quiet your mind. It's been clinically proven that regular exercise can be as effective for treating mild to moderate depression as antidepressants, so go for a walk or a run leave them up behind. Keep a mood journal. Getting your thoughts on paper can be cathartic and often insightful. Also keep track of the things that you have to be grateful for. The most important thing to remember is that no matter how bad it gets, if you take the right steps, talk to the right people, black dog days can and will pass. I wouldn't say that I'm grateful for the black dog, but he's been an incredible teacher. He forced me to reevaluate and simplify my life. I learned that rather than running away from my problems, it's better to embrace them. The black dog may always be part of my life, and he'll never be the beast that he was. We have an understanding. I've learned through knowledge, patience, discipline, and humor, the worst black dog can be made to heal. If you're in difficulty, never be afraid to ask for help. There is absolutely no shame in doing so. The only shame is missing out on life. slide here is, is useful resources so um, and that is sort of the depression UK uh, .org .uk. obviously mind in Bexley please feel free um, to call us and talk to us 
and there's another link there for the Samaritans. Um, thank you uh, for listening to this workshop. <laughs>